Cisco Secure X is a free cloud-based tool that comes for free to any Cisco customers who have a Cisco security product that is capable of integrating with Cisco Secure X. That's pretty much almost all of them, uh, depending on which version you are on as well. And Cisco Secure X provides unified visibility, which basically means it gives you a single view of what's happening across the entire infrastructure, your entire security infrastructure. You're able to automate a lot of the work using workflows and use them for investigation and remediation purposes. It has a drag and drop interface that enables you to understand the security posture of your network. And as Cisco has a low code approach with this tool, it doesn't require much in the way of programming skills. And it does all of this by allowing you to connect to all of your Cisco and even non-Cisco security devices and pull all the information from it, correlate it and feed it back to you about information about your environment. And it also allows you to sign into all of your Cisco security products to what's known as SecureX sign-on. I think it's approximately about nine products at the minute, which allows you to log into all your solutions from the SecureX GUI. So it's single sign-on and it's powered by Cisco Duo as well for multi-factor authentication purposes, but there's also built into factor authentication as well. So it provides unified visibility across everything because it's able to view your network, endpoint, cloud and applications and able to integrate with third party applications as well. But let's drill into some of the areas and see what it has to offer. So looking at the GUI, at the top we have the dashboard, then we have integration modules, orchestration and administration. With the dashboard, you have customizable dashboards that provide you with a quick look at things and important metrics about your network. Integration modules, these are well-known vendor technologies of third-party tools that we can integrate with, as well as the Cisco-owned products as well. Orchestration, with orchestration, it allows you to respond to threats with machine-like speed via responses, the core workflows, which automates everything, so it reduces the number of manual hours spent on investigation, response and threat hunting, etc. And then we've got administration, that's just administrating the box itself. Well, in this case, it's a cloud service, so administrating the cloud service itself. You have access to the marketplace for current and future products. These are the applications and integrations you want to integrate with. These are the technologies that SecureX can monitor and take in all of the data in order to provide the visibility and secure the environment. The top two applications that are available to us by default which is threat response, which is used for detection and investigation and remediation. And there's also a security services exchange, which is used to manage your devices that are integrated with SecureX. Next, we have enabled integration. So you can see lots of them here. And then if we keep scrolling down, we can see the Cisco integrations we can integrate with. You can also run a free trial. So some of these you can run a free trial right from this GUI interface here. And further down, we've got third-party integration. So you can see quite a lot of the third-party tools down here. So you can see IBM X-Force Exchange, for example, Palo Alto Networks Autofocus, uh, a Microsoft product here, Qualys, Radware, and others as well. Now in the middle of the dashboard here, we've got a very customizable view of the dashboard. And these are known as metric tiles, which you can change to suit your needs of what you want to see on a daily basis of the key metrics picked up by your security solutions. You can shuffle and create new dashboards. The dashboards are basically a quick update of what's going on in the environment. Everything is pivotable, which means you can click links and the links will direct you to the technology solutions of the exact page. And also you can take actions on something called observables in different areas of the products as well. So at the top we can see we can categorize the dashboards. We've got three different dashboards here. We can customize it from here. If we click that, we can create a dashboard from here. We can change the name at the top here. We can add more tiles. So we can click on, let's say Firepower. We can add some of these. And we've got all of these products here to choose from and all the tiles within these different products. And you can also drill into the dashboards as well. So for example, you can drill into what Firepower has found on the firewall itself or what the endpoint has found, he may have found a malicious file. So you can drill into all of these and you've got some options within the dashboards as well. So you can change the time. You've got more options in here, the three dots here. You can refresh it as well. And on the right hand side, you've got this new section here. So in here, you get the product updates, you get industry news, you get blog post information, new information about SecureX, new SecureX features, third party and government announcements too. 
There is a news feed available to us from different sources such as Cisco Security and Cisco Talos as well. And at the bottom we've got Secure Ribbon, so if we click on it, Secure Ribbon is a feature to share context between all of the teams and across all of the security tools as well. We see information on incidents, case books, we've got Orbital Search in here and we can launch applications directly from here as well. So to go to the homepage of Secure Ribbon, we just click on here, SecureX, we are at the homepage now. On the left here, we've got Casebook, Incidents, Orbital, Notification Center and Settings. And in the middle, we've got lots of applications which we can launch from here. Then we've got My Account User Information, the user account that's signed in currently. And on the right here, we've got Notifications. Then we've got this little square box with lots of dots. Basically, this is the applications again, and you can launch it from here as well. We then have the Casebook link here, and next to it, we have Incident Manager. And then we've got Orbital. And whatever you select changes the workspace within the ribbon. So it always shows you the last piece that we was working on within these little pop-up screens. And here the search box lets you paste text into which SecureX will pull out observables from that text, which you can further investigate and respond to those observables. Now observables are things like file hashes, IP addresses, URLs, domains email addresses, things like that, things it needs to observe to find any malicious threats and feed that back to you for further investigation and remediation. And this one on the right will find observables on whichever page you are on. So if you click that, it will look for the observables on the page. Drilling in further into the features and looking at what they are, what you can do with SecureX. So the first one is Casebook. What is Casebook? Casebook gathers observables in groups. So Casebook lets you group a set of observables together and you can assign the case a name and a description and then you're able to save notes on that case as well. Observables, again, are things like file hashes, IP addresses, URLs, domains, email addresses and so on. And then you can investigate the casebook, which is effectively the group of observables in the casebook in threat response or you can link the casebook to an incident as well. So you can do further things with the casebook in terms of investigation and threat response. You can create new cases from here, or you can see the cases that are owned by yourself from here or owned by others. Then in the middle, you've got the overview section, which is details about the casebook. And if we try open a case, then we will see a bit more information. So let's click this one with eight observables. Now on the right, we've got some uh, overview details about the observables. So the title created owner etc and then in the middle we've got the observables which is uh, exactly what the observables are so you can see it's got four domains one ip addresses one sha for a file hash and it's got two urls as well you can further break these down to have a look at these and see what they are and then there's some more information down here as well such as a suspicious url and you can investigate this in threat response and on the right, you've got some notes, so you can take more notes on this and add your own notes in here. And here's the options where you can investigate it in threat response or you can link it to an incident. We will have a look at threat response next, but going back to the homepage and having a look at incidents. Incidents, we can get to the incident manager, which is a list of all the security incidents across all of the integrated products. From here, you're able to assign the incidents to someone, open close incidents and work on tickets and able to start investigation and take a responsive action if you wanted to block a domain, for example. So you can work on incidents from here. And back to the home page again, there's Orbital Search. So with Orbital Search, it's basically in-depth detail endpoint visibility through pre-built queries. And this is in SQL format, so you can create your own queries here too. So I cannot show you Orbital Search in any more detail because it's not running on this demo box. And the ribbon follows you around across all your applications. So if we go back to the home page again, and if we have a look at applications, let's launch an application, let's launch threat response because we will be using this very shortly. If we launch threat response, we can see that ribbon is still here and we can open up the ribbon from here and go back to SecureX from here as well. We'll come back to threat response. If we go back to Cisco SecureX and we move on to integration modules here. So these are the modules we can integrate with. Let's minimize the ribbon again and we can see the integrations in here. So my integration modules are the ones we are connected to and that we have activated. And then we have available integration modules, which are the ones we can integrate with if we have those products. The top part are Cisco technologies and further below are third party modules. 
administration is administering the service itself so we won't have a look at this too much but if we go into it we can see you can um, create new user accounts you can set up the device and the date time format etc but if we go into orchestration in orchestration you get the orchestration workflows which are effectively pre-built out of the box playbooks provided by Cisco you're able to create and import your own playbooks too and workflows reduce tasks being done manually and speed up detection and response so they help you get things done and they also tell you what is the next step to resolve something but they can be if anything you need them to be in order to investigate and remediate and take responsive actions we can see all of the workflows here in the middle and you can click on a workflow to see how it's been built or if you wanted to edit or run it and see the workflow actions inside of it so this is the tool where you edit the workflow and you can see the flow chart with the series of events inside it in the middle the workflows can work with on-premise or in the cloud assets you can even throw a python script into the workflow and it will run a python script as part of its steps to get the task done and you can see the many different operations on the left hand side here you can drag into the workflow area if you wanted to edit it as well so there's lots of these if we scroll down and this helps you create workflows if we back out of this page and we can see here on the left hand side these are settings that help you automate the workflow from here and last but not least workflows have been developed for other vendors as well so it's not just Cisco products the last part I wanted to have a look at is Cisco threat response and with threat response it provides threat intelligence using Cisco Talos and other third party intelligence sources you want to use and you can carry out investigations using those services so if we needed to investigate anything this is where we would do it and we can see at the top here anything we wanted to search we wanted to research and check we can just type it in at the top here and you can paste web pages in here blogs articles to check if any of the web page has any malicious links if I type something in here just to test it out but I'm not sure if this is going to work for me because it's a demo box and let's click on investigate here let's see what it does so it's showing us that one observable is being investigated here and it's showing us in the middle it's a domain and it's called wicar.org and this domain this website is designed to test the correct operation of anti-malware software but because this is a demo box it's not really connected to any real devices that are seeing things seeing things in terms of user traffic etc it's not going to report on anything it's not going to find anything so it's probably a bad test but you can see the two modules here that is uh, running it again so it's running it against umbrella and talos intelligence and none of them have seen anything with this domain but i've got an image instead of what it can typically find so let me pull up the image and we can go through the image And here is an image running an investigation in threat response and the image is showing that there were six observables and threat response is asking all of the technologies which are called modules which we can see on the right there are three of them and it's asking them if they know about all of these observables and if we hovered over the modules it would show us the three modules and which of them have information about the observables again observables can be a number of things such as IP addresses URLs domains a file hash etc we can see a number of sightings in my environment area at the top with the graph over a period of time and in the middle it shows a relationship graph showing these items these observables and the relations they have to each other unfortunately I cannot zoom in because it's an image but we would typically be able to see the observables and any of its relationships it has picked up from the module so for example when investigating a domain or an IP address threat response starts an investigation like it has done here and it's asking all of the technologies if they know anything about the domain or the IP address in this case there has been six observables investigated then it finds let's say a malicious file with an activity to an IP address that was one of the observables we started an investigation on and this investigation can be done directly from the browser as well by the way through a plugin not just from this portal and through this investigation we may find an endpoint that has received the malicious file over email or Microsoft OneDrive or even both we may then find that the file has made it to other parts of the environment and so on so this is all built up in these relationship graphs and we can then actually take actions and isolate the endpoints to stop the files from spreading further right from here and it will block the endpoint from any further activities so that we don't just have the access to investigate this we can remediate it right from the threat response GUI interface itself